Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, powerhouse kings and queens, I'm Zupa Goggins, I'm a frag freak, and let me hear your scream. Let me hear your scream. Let me hear your scream. Let's get straight into it today. None of that faffing about at the beginning like I usually do. So the fragrance I bring you today is none other than Versace, the dreamer. I did have it in the box there, but I've taken it out and forgot to put it back in. So there's the box anyway. Versace the Dreamer is described by Fragrantica as an oriental fougere, but I'll get to about what Fragrantica knows about stuff in general in a moment, all right? It was released in 1996 and is by a perfumer called Jean-Pierre Betoit. Jean-Pierre Betoit. I've got some uh, notes down there. Um, I've never heard of him either. I know he's done for some stuff for Versace and for Burberry and for Yoji Yamamoto. Um, and I'll pop a picture of him up there with his name there so you can see if you can say it properly. And um, yes, it's, it's an exceptionally beautiful fragrance as far as I'm concerned. This is my second bottle. The other one is empty. I've used it all. So it shows you what I think about it. Um, I do have a rather substantial fragrance collection and I've used a whole bottle of this so you can tell I like it. The bottle is absolutely excellent, I really like it. It's got the sprayer incorporated into the top of it there. Um, the place where I get mine from, the bottles are often broken because people try to take that off and just snap it. Um, dumb buggers. And uh, yeah, I, I love the bottle. It's very simple, very, very simple and very pleasing and, and, it's, and it's lovely. Um, this is a 2017 formulation of this. Now, the one that I had previously to this, I think was a 2015 or 16. I can't remember, but it was definitely older. It wasn't younger, was it? Um, and I couldn't detect any noticeable difference at all between the two of them. The performance on this is still absolutely excellent. I'll talk about the performance later on. And, um, as far as I'm concerned, the new formulation is just as good as it ever was. I mean, people complain and say that it's different now, but whatever, you know? Um, as far as the notes are concerned on this one, um, there seems to be some conflicting views. For instance, on Fragrantica, uh, I looked at the notes on Fragrantica and base notes, and it's like, right, imagine you have going to the pub with three guys, right? And you know two of them very well and one is a new guy, say for instance, say he's called Gary, okay? You get to the pub and Gary and one of your mates go to the bar to get the round in and you ask the mate who's there with you, what's Gary like? And your mate says, he's a lovely guy, he's really nice, you can trust him, he's lovely to his family and he'll always buy you a pint. So you think, all right, fair enough. Gary and the other mate come back again, you finish your drinks, this time the mate you've just spoken to and Gary go to the bar to get the round in and you say to the other mate, what's Gary like? And he says, no, no, you can't trust him at all. He beats his wife up, and the only good thing about him is he will get you a pint. So the information you've gleaned is that two totally opposing opinions, but with one thing in common, right? So now, for Grantica, say about this, I have to use my notes here, right? Don't look at me like that. I can do it without my notes. So the top notes are, According to Fragrantica, you've got lavender, mandarin, orange, sage, carnation, tobacco, rose, geranium, fir, tonka, vetiver, and cedar. Got all that? Good, because I haven't. Then base notes say juniper, lily, iris, tobacco, amber, and tarragon. So the two views are completely different, except for one thing. They both agree there's tobacco in there, like Gary and he'll get you a pint. So, I'm just going to have to tell you what I get from it because sod all that, you know, they're clearly neither of them know what they're talking about. Maybe, maybe partially both know what they're talking about. Maybe, I don't know, I can't smell iris in it for a start. So anyway, let's have a go. Right, ready? By the way, I've got um, Lolita Lempica or Masculine on this arm here. So I'm not going to let that distract me. I do know the fragrance quite well. I'm going to spray this on here and be like, well, I'm getting some aniseed from this. Yeah, of course you are. Okay, so I've actually sprayed it on here a bit earlier on, so I've got sort of a layering of, of the masculine and the Dreamer on here, and I'm going to spray it fresh here, okay? 
people complain about the opening of this, saying that it's harsh and they don't like it. It takes a while to dry down. I love the opening of it. It smells to me like it smells to me like a cardboard box, a wet cardboard box. But right, imagine if someone was hallucinating, right? They just come out of rehab or something, so they decide to have a cup of tea instead of some cider, and and they think that this cardboard box is their cup, right? So they put some tea bags in the box and then some sugar and then they pour boiling water on that and then someone comes in and goes what are you doing that's not your cup and they leave it right that's what this smells like on the opening it smells like a cardboard box with sugar and tea bags in and and it's been left on the car on the carpet and then someone's coming and sprayed the dreamer into it so it's like a mix of the, the itself and that but i think it smells great i love a bit of cardboard box tea and sugar they should bring out a fragrance called that i'd buy it so from all of those notes listed, this is what I get. This is what my nose tells me. My nose goes, lavender, tonga bean, tobacco, sage, and geranium. Now that floral has got a slight spiciness to it. I can detect some florals that my brain is not good enough to detect out there. I think there's, there's carnation as well. Um, no, carnation is the one I can smell. What did I say? I can't remember. Carnation is the one I can smell. Carnation is the one with the, it's meant to have a spicy uh, element to it, isn't it? Whatever I, did I, anyway, whatever I said, I mean carnation. Um, then there's meant to be fur in here as well and, and some various other things. I can get, get a vague citrus element in here, but it's meant to be mandarin orange. I said from back there, wasn't it? Mandarin orange. Um, but I think it smells a little bit more, almost lemony to me, but not in, a, in an overly bright citrus way, in a sort of almost like a peely kind of way. So the smell is very, very nice. It's, it smells kind of, um, the tobacco and the tonka and the sweetness are all very strong. It's quite masculine, but it leans a tiny bit feminine. Now, if this bloke and woman was on the seesaw, bloke's a bit heavier, I think, so it's gonna weigh that way, but it could almost be a unisex fragrance, I think. Um, the performance on this, uh, first of all, about the batch code, we'll go back to that. The batch code for my 2017 one, um, it, I'll give you the batch code information. Uh, the first of all, I'll give you a picture of the batch code just there for you, so you can have a look at that in case you don't believe me. Then there's some information gleaned from that batch code just up there as well. Okay, in case you think uh, you, you know it's not a 2017 one. Um, I'm going to give this performance on this one is very very good. Now we haven't had the zoopometer in a while, so we'll have that up now. Let's have a look at the zoopometer. Which side should I put it up there? Let's point both ways, and then I can make up my mind where I'm going to put it up. There's the zoopometer, and um, I'm going to put this at Monster's Apprentice because it is very strong for me. And uh, some people say that it's um, a lot of uh, it's getting a lot of moderate votes on Fragrantica, but for me it's very strong. Now you do have to bear in mind that I wear it almost exclusively in the summer, and I do put a lot on. I'm talking eight Spraysville, you know that kind of area. <laughs> Um, so it's going to be quite strong like that, isn't it? Um, overall, for me, it smells, it's got a bright and airy aspect to it. It's got a freshness to it, which I really, really like. But it also, as well as that um, sort of fresh and airy sort of laundry-ish kind of vibe, that sort of breezy laundry greenness, there's a greenness in there as well, a sort of herbal greenness, um, coming from the lavender and the sage or whatever the, the, um, also that the base notes think is in there. There is, um, as well as it being light and airy, I, I get a sort of warmth and a coziness from it as well. Now, it sounds like a contradiction, doesn't it? That it can be breezy and airy and yet warm and cozy at the same time. But I think I get that. I think it's, it's got a warm and cozy aspect to it. It's very comforting and it is absolutely amazing to wear to bed, which is what I do with it a lot. I put this on very often to go to bed and it's very, very comforting and helps me to drift off into a lovely dream. So that fits nicely, doesn't it? <laughs> um, where else do I need to go with this? Let's consult my notes again. It seems to be quite a handy thing to do. Um, batch information, blah, blah, blah. Oh yeah, where I got this from and the price. Um, this is an absolute steal, this fragrance. It is, I mean, it's ridiculously cheap. Um, you can get it for 20 quid these days. Where I got my one from for 20 quid uh, is a shop that I mention quite often called Beauty Base. Now this time I'm going to do a link for them. It's a London based shop. So if you're ever down this area or you live around here or whatever, check them out if you haven't done already. They do some great stuff and um, always worth having a, a look in there. They've, they've sometimes got some little gems and stuff that are, that are shortly gone to get discontinued and stuff like that. I've, I've seen um, Diesel Fuel for Life Spirit and uh, Midnight in Paris and uh, Jean-Paul Gaultier Fleur de Mail, things like that in that store, 
when they were near to being discontinued and my um, my Lolita Limpica uh, Old Masculine, which I'm not sure if they've been discontinued, but it's certainly very hard to find these days. Um, what else was I meant to link? Something else, wasn't I? Uh, let's, let's go blah, blah, blah. I think I pretty much covered everything except for um, the begging, which I always forget these days. So, you know, it would be encouraging for me to have a few more subscribers, wouldn't it? I've been stuck on like 36 for the past week or something like that. And I know that's partly down to me not doing enough or whatever, or maybe not being interesting enough. I bloody hope it's not that. Um, so if you could uh, like, that'd be great. If you could comment, that'd be fantastic. For anyone who doesn't know how to comment, just scroll down past the videos that are underneath this one. Scroll, scroll, scroll. Yeah. And you'll get to where the comments are and you can say something there if you want to. Even if it's bad. I, I, no, no, no. Don't say something bad. Um, and also the, you, in the description is right beside the description of the name of this video. There's a little arrow in the corner pointing downwards. You can click that and it will open some information where you can, you know what you're doing, don't you? Like, uh, anyway. Um, yeah, so like, comment and subscribe if you would, please. That'd be amazing. Press the notification things or I'll come around to your house, kick it down and beat crap out of you. Okay, I won't, I won't at all. I'm not like that. I won't, I just, that's how that came out. I just got unnecessarily aggressive there and it's not good at all. So, um, that's going to do it for ne for this video, I think, and I'll see you on the next one. So safe man, chill out, enough respect, and this has been Versace Dreamer with Zoopy Goggins. All the best, guys.